Hey, this is Buzz with episode 26, part 2, in my discussion of my radio field pack. In this edition, I'll be discussing the antenna system and accessories that will go into the pack. That's next on Airwaves. Buzz Stones Airwaves. This is Buzz checking in, episode 26, part 2, and we're discussing my radio field pack that I'm assembling. In the first episode, if you didn't see that, you need to go back and check that out, but in that episode I showed you the power system that I was using to power my field radio. But in this edition, we're discussing antennas and accessories that are all going to go into that field pack. And I'll start out, first of all, with antennas. And uh, as in the first video, you saw a, a vinyl bag like this. Like I said, I like to repurpose uh, items that normally might just be uh, tossed away. Uh, this is a vinyl bag with a zipper on top. And in here, I'm keeping my antenna components. And what I decided to do was use an end-fed antenna. Uh, for field operations and that's primarily because it's fairly compact and uh, it's easy to set up and they're quite effective so I'll get uh, what I have in the vinyl bag here and as I said I decided on N fed antenna and uh, bought this online got a, a good price on it it comes with, this is called, and I guess if I pronounce this correctly, an unin or unin. It's basically a, a transformer uh, that transforms the high resistance that you have at the end of an end fed antenna. You get a very high resistance. And uh, what this does is that brings that resistance down to a level where the uh, transmitter receiver transceiver can use that and uh, it came with this uh, and also a, a length of wire here I believe it's uh, 30 feet of wire with an insulator at the end and basically an in-fed antenna is like half of a dipole antenna on a dipole you've got two legs and then you have a, a box like this in the middle where you feed your uh, coaxial cable into there so but on in fed antenna you've only got the single strand of wire but what you do have is the option to attach a second wire a ground wire so let's say we got 30 feet of wire here we would get a second wire this 30 feet and attach it here to the side and you could actually just lay that on the ground instead of having to stretch it between two points and that's what makes this um, easier to set up out in the field. Now you also have the option uh, if you don't have this uh, second ground wire you can use the coax cable will act as uh, your second wire as like in a dipole. If you're going to do that in that case you need at least 16 feet of coax cable uh, going into uh, into your transformer here. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to open this up for you in case you've never looked inside of one of these. So hold on, be back with you in a second. Okay, I've removed the back panel uh, from the uh, UNAN or UNAN unbalanced to unbalanced transformer. And you see you have a coil here that's called a, a toroid. And then we've got wires wrapped around the toroid. And there's actually three in this configuration which is called a tri filler uh, winding because you have three wires and you have a wire you know coming up here to where your uh, antenna wire comes in you have another one coming down here for your counterpoise or, or the uh, ground wire and then you have uh, one also coming in here to the uh, SO239 connector which is also uh, running the, the outside of that over to the ground as well. So that's what one of these looks like inside. And again, as I was telling you, uh, when you're using uh, this type of configuration, you get a high impedance on your wire uh, on an end-fed unit like this. 
And what this transformer coil does is it reduces that by a factor of nine to one. And you may typically have anywhere from, you know, three to six or seven hundred ohms uh, at the end of that wire. So you can divide that by nine. It gets it down to a usable level. Now when you use one of these antennas, you do need to have an antenna tuner. Uh, otherwise it, it wouldn't be um, very useful to you. Uh, and as I told you in the first video, I'm going to use my Zygu G90 HF uh, transceiver, SDR radio, which has a built-in tuner. Now if you have an HF radio that doesn't have a tuner, of course they make uh, separate tuner units and some of them are you know, not all that expensive. They have ones made specifically uh, for this situation. But if you're going to use this type of antenna, you really do need an antenna tuner uh, to make it useful for your radio. Now this one, particular one here is rated at uh, 100 watts and it uh, covers 40 to 6 meters including the WARC bands. Now you could add lower bands by adding an extended wire length to this and you could also use this for a shortwave antenna as well. You know you got to keep in mind that uh, you have to have specific lengths of wire depending on which band you're going to use it for and you can't just put uh, just any random length um, of wire and that's a different kind of antenna called a random length uh, wire antenna but basically uh, the lengths that you would use with this would be um, 30 feet, 36, 49, 53, 71 or 84 feet again depending on which uh, bands you intend to use this with uh, this can be down at ground level, but your uh, wire uh, for your antenna needs to be strung up somewhere high, as high as you can get it. Typically, you would use a, a tree if there's a nearby tree, and um, you would need to tie uh, a rope onto something that you can throw up in the air and get, your, get this rope up over, say, a tree branch or something so that you can pull your antenna up. Now your antenna can be actually it could be horizontal, it could be at an angle which they call a sloper, or it could be vertical. Uh, you could use it in any of those configurations uh, really depending on uh, on what it is you're trying to achieve. But um, so as far as the antenna goes, uh, the main elements are of course the the unin, uh, the the rope to get your antenna up in the air, and I'm going to cut a length, a 30-foot length of wire to use for the ground wire, the counterpoise. Don't have that in here right at the moment, but I am going to include that in my kit. And of course, the uh, the coax cable. So that's the antenna component. And um, I've got some accessories here that I also think that are important to have. In another video I did, you may have seen where I did a uh, a review. Uh, the VNA, the Virtual Network Analyzer. And uh, so I'm bringing this, I'm going to have this with me as well so I can actually take a look at the antenna and uh, see what it looks like uh, in respect to matching it up with my HF transceiver. So that's a good uh, tool to have to bring with you if you have one of those. I've also got some uh, little short coax jumpers here, some coax adapters, I've got uh, USB cables over here, a uh, set of heavy-duty uh, earphones so I can uh, plug into the radio if I don't want to, uh, you know, have everybody hearing the audio that's, that's coming out. So that's, again, that's in this little patch here, another uh, thing that I've repurposed. Also, I think it's a good idea probably to uh, bring at least some tools with you. Um, this is a screwdriver kit, you know, inexpensive kit, but it's got many different uh, tips in there, um, which might come in handy if you need to disassemble something and, and repair something. Also, it's a good idea to have a notepad with you because you're going to need to write down who your contacts, call signs were, what frequencies you were operating. Uh, band conditions, weather conditions, whatever notes you want to take. 
And since you are going to be outside, this was actually a, a military uh, pouch here made for these right in the rain notepads, uh, which would probably be a good idea to have because you don't know what the weather conditions are going to be. But a uh, good idea to be able to have something to write notes on. Also, I have this little um, tape measure here. If you need to measure distances, maybe for something, maybe you're going to uh, uh, create another antenna out in the field. You're going to need something to to measure the lengths with. Also, uh, you may actually be out in dark conditions, and this is a Goal Zero Lighthouse Mini, is what it's called. I really love this thing. Um, these legs fold down, so you can set it up. It has a place up here where you could hook something to hang it if you want to hang it. It has a built-in USB cable for charging. Okay, so I could actually plug this into that power cell that I showed you in uh, episode 26, part 1. And I'll turn it on here for you. Um, also, it, of course, it has an internal cell uh, that that charges. But it also has a USB port here, so you can actually use this to recharge other things uh, that will take a USB cable. But uh, by turning it on, the blue LEDs here indicate the uh, charge level. You can see it's fully charged. And this also adjusts the, the brightness. It'll get, it gets pretty bright. This will light uh, an average size room up really well. But if you need just a little bit of light, you can you go down. You can actually turn on only one side of it, which is nice. And then once that's there, you can also adjust the brightness. You can see even with one side, it's pretty bright. But it's a, it's a neat little light, very uh, compact. Again, it's a Goal Zero Lighthouse Mini. I'm not sure if they still make this. I bought this, uh, I guess, about three years ago. Uh, but if they don't have this exact one, they have something very similar to it. And uh, Goal Zero makes some pretty good stuff. Nice little unit, good thing to have. You never know when it's going to get dark on you. And a lot of people like to uh, have a laptop with them or, or, some, or a pad, um, which is what I'm using here. And uh, got this, uh, of course, I keep in a pouch uh, to protect the screen on it. But uh, as I showed you in a previous video, uh, the VNA, Virtual Network Analyzer, um, it does ha come with a software program that you can use as well. So I'm thinking that I could uh, load that software program onto here and uh, get a display. And of course, you never know, you might want to uh, take pictures, which of course you can do with this. And uh, if you're somewhere where you have actual uh, Wi-Fi internet, then all the better. And this is not, this next item here, it's not an accessory. It's actually, you know, this is a field pack and it's basically um, centering on the HF radio, but I do intend to bring uh, Handy Talkie as well. This particular one here is a Yezu VX6. It's a uh, multi-band VHF, UHF transceiver and it is submersible. Um, so very good uh, uh, handy talking. They've been around for a long time. And I have uh, extra batteries too for this. So that basically is the antenna and accessories that I'll be putting in my field pack. I told you I had ordered it and it actually did come in the mail today. So in the next video, what I'm going to be doing is uh, giving you a review of the pack, which again, I think it's really cool. I think you'll want to see that. And then once that's completed, uh, then I'll be putting everything into the pack, see how it all fits in there. And it, it looks like it's uh, going to be a workable situation. But anyway, this has been uh, episode 26, part two of a multi-part series. Like I say, we'll have at least a part three with uh, the pack, and then a part four, we wrap it all up. 
and put it all together in the pack and we'll see how it all works out appreciate you tuning in be sure and watch for the next uh, installment of this series this has been episode 26 part 2 part 3 coming up soon this is buzz be sure to subscribe like and share and i'll see you down the dial